a one little twist on it. So if you can say that line, but then say, as far as you know, this is the first time you're watching the game. Yes. yes. All right. Um, hey, this is Jimmy Jean Louis, and as far as I can remember, this is the very first time you're watching Get Your Geek On podcast. Hold on, one more time. Are we recording that? Yeah, we got it. We okay. got it. That's awesome. Right. Perfect. I can do it again, just for safety. Yeah. You want to do it again? Yeah. Go right yeah. Go ahead. Nerd. Hey, this is Jimmy Jean Louis, and as far as I can remember. This is the very first time that we're watching the Geek On. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> we got the first one. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. All right. All righty. So, are we, and then you guys want to go live? Uh, hold on. I'm trying to get your. It's not stay. If you can't stay, don't worry. About All, right. All right. All right. Are we live? Are we live? Sure. Hey, everyone. Welcome to a super special Starstruck Chuck edition of the Get Your Geek On podcast. We, as always, are your host, Chuck Kiewatz. Robert Dokes. And this one is huge for me. If you've ever followed this page from day one or followed it at all, you know that my favorite show of all time was Heroes on NBC, Heroes Reborn, whatever iteration of it was. And we are lucky enough to have one of the main cast members here, the guy who inspired my tattoo behind many of the props that you see here on this table, the one and only Mr. Jimmy Jean-Louis is live with us via Skype. Thank you so much for joining us today, Jimmy. It is a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Not a problem. So uh, just first of all, we want to thank you for being on the show. But uh, for those who don't know, Jimmy played the Haitian, who on the, the show of Heroes was one of the most popular and powerful characters on the show. Not only could he negate other people's powers, he could remove memories, which is really cool. But another great thing is in the webcomic they made for the series, which you can see here on the end of the table, he had probably one of the most tragic backstories of any character that was ever created on that show. But what was it like a little bit for you before... Uh, we'll, we'll talk Heroes and talk the rest of your career. What was it like to play kind of a mute character for the first part of Heroes? Uh, it was all right, because I knew that I was going to end up speaking... Because uh, when I first met Tim Kring and, uh, and all the gang, they said that, yeah, there's going to be quite an in interesting arc with your storyline. But the first few episodes, you're not going to say a word. But you're going to have to manage to say a lot without saying anything. So it was a lot of body expression, you know, the way that I stood, the way that I looked at people. And, uh, you know, just, just subtle movements that sort of uh, sent all the right messages, you know, before I even opened my mouth. Oh, definitely. I, I was, you were one of the first things when I first watched that show that was very eye-catching. Your character said nothing yet was so powerful on screen. Um, and just like, you know, what, what was the motivation? What did they say when you went into act, when you went, it's like, okay, you're not going to say anything, but how, you know, how did you emote like your character's presence? Well, you have to, I mean, I guess I had to understand the power I had to start with and, and, and make it come from within. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and also, you know, I have some kind of dense background. Mm -hmm. So the way that I, uh, that I, that I stood, the way that, uh, you know, even just the, the headstand or the shoulder stand and all those subtle things, you know, uh, played the part. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and at the end of the day, everything was in the eyes as well. You mm -hmm. know, everything everything was in the eyes. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the cool things about your characters is that you actually had two different powers, which was very rarely seen on the show. But one of the things that I've seen, and it's not even just on Heroes with your acting, is you're very, very incredible at being able to hide your emotions and your motivations with a character. Mm -hmm. And for a perfect example, I'll say uh, when in the scene in Heroes where you were supposed to uh, completely remove Peter's memories and get rid of him, and you just ripped a little bit of him and you locked him in the shipping container. But just the way you hid that intention in the entire scene, you're just a very great actor at hiding your emotions and then having these huge outburst moments but when when you're studying your process for acting what is it that you kind of go to what place do you go to to find the emotion in a character like the haitian uh, often it goes to i mean i go back to one of my experiences you know in life uh, i was i was privileged enough to have lived in uh, in a bunch of countries bunch of uh, cities a bunch of uh, meeting with all kind of social uh uh, power.
powerful people, homeless, and I mean, mm-hmm. with that kind of arc within my experience, I can always dig in for the the character that they give me and somehow find one of my real life experience that I can identify with, yeah, like- and mix that mix that with whatever character that I'm playing. Mm-hmm. So a little so, bit. So that's. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. So, so yeah. So I, I really try to, to make every everything as real as possible because at the end of the day, not only I know that uh, it can happen, but often it happened before. Now I read like in terms of this, your parents immigrated from Haiti to Paris, and then immigrated back to Haiti while you and your brother stayed. <laughs> in Paris, and you got your break in London uh, as a model, and then you went on to musical theater in Barcelona, Spain. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's all correct. Not, not in the right order. Okay. But <laughs> 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 yeah, I did move to, to Paris when I was about 11 or 12, but then, you know, after my parents moved back to, to Haiti, I, I ended up, you know, pretty much by myself with my brother. So I was 18, 19, just, just exploring life by myself, you know. Um, but from there, I went to Spain. That's when I made the first move, worked in the musical theater. And then from there, I moved into modeling and, and, and I did some, some commercials and a little bit of acting, you know, in, in different countries such as uh, Italy, South Africa, Mm -hmm. uh, England, of course, and then, uh, and then America. Mm -hmm. I also recall reading somewhere that you initially, before you getting the Haitian part, you initially in, uh, auditioned for DL Hawkins's part. Is that correct? Yes, yes, it is. It is correct. I went there like three times, man. <laughs> you know, first time was all right. You know, they called me back for a call back. It was okay. But true story, after they shot the pilot, after they shot the pilot, they still were casting that character. They recasted it. They put in five actors. I still remember. It was myself, Boris Kojo. Uh, I mean, I, I remember all really? the faces. Really? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. That, so they, like, they, they one, yeah. like, before they ended up on, um, I think, August, uh, for now, um, they had, like, they had brought in Boris Code. Wow. Wow. Yeah, That's... yeah, yeah. All of us, all of us went in, you know, for, for that character of DL, but no, they stuck with, uh, with Leonard, Leonard Roberts, who originally got, got the part, you know, and, and, and he shot the pilot. But I don't know why they wanted to, to recast it, but I know that story definitely happened because I was in the room. <laughs> All right, now one of the things that we like to do here with some of our guests is ask them kind of a weird superhero question. And since you were on a show with tons of different superpowers, this is a would you rather. So would you rather have the ability to fly, but you could only eat hot dogs for every meal for the rest of your life, or teleport, but you could only wear a Santa suit for the rest of your life? Shit. (laughs) (laughs) Uh... Fuck, hot dog is horrible after a while, man. Teleport, uh, man, anywhere you go in the world, but you got to be rocking I, that Santa suit. The thing is, I love flying. You know, flying, the sensation is great, that freedom. But that Santa, that Santa suit, you know, if I go to, to, to the Caribbean, I'll be... No, no, I mean, I'll take, I'll take flying and hot dog. Take those <laughs> hot dogs, man. All right. That, yeah, yeah. <laughs> good choice there. <laughs> Robert, which one would you go with? Would you rather... <laughs> would you rather be in you know oh gosh and I, Robert passes that's what I, I have to pass so man. now one of the things that we do want to ask is what's next for you so when we were talking apparently there's uh, some current projects that you're working on right now I don't know if it's too top secret to talk about but what's next in the world for you for acting uh, right now I'm, I'm, I'm in New Orleans uh, shooting the second season of Claws mm mm-hmm. Claws, which is on TNT, yeah, and uh, mm-hmm. and yes, yeah, so I'm I'm one of the main guys this uh, this season, and uh, it's going extremely well. So I'm very excited about that. And uh, in November and December, I shot a movie with uh, with uh, my dear friend Jack Coleman. HRG, yes, HRG, indeed. It's uh, they it's were like called the, the Niro. <laughs> 
It's called Rattlesnakes, and uh, and hopefully, you know, you guys will be able to see it by uh, maybe the end of the year or beginning of next year. We'll see. Oh, we will be plugging the heck out of that. Now, uh, but couple, just two more questions before we get you out of here. Now, when Heroes Reborn came back, I was absolutely excited. I have never been that excited in my life than when I had heard that it came back. My only tattoo is your symbol. Everybody that knows all this stuff here is from the show. But what was it like to be one of the few cast members that did come back? Uh, and was it a different feel to the show? And it just uh, tell us a little bit about what that was like to kind of usher in the new generation of heroes. I mean, the, the weird thing was the fact that we were shooting in Toronto versus our original studios, uh, which was in Hollywood, Sunset Gower. Uh, but at the same time, you know, I, I was back with Jack Coleman. I was back with a few other guys and back with Tim Crane. And, and a gang of youngsters. So, you know, it was, it was good. Of course, it wasn't the same, the same feel as in uh, the first uh, round of Heroes. But at the same time, you know, uh, I still enjoyed it, man. You know, it's a shame we only did 13 episodes and just stopped it. But uh, for me, I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I was happy to, 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 to get the call because oh. they didn't have to call me. Absolutely. Now, no one ever could have expected the first season to be the cultural phenomenon that it was and the way that it took over. And you had some great scenes with characters. So my last uh, question for you before you get out of here is a two-part question. Who was your favorite character or fight scene to work with? And then if you could have had a different superpower on the show, what would it have been? Uh, Fight scene... I guess I like the the scene that you described earlier on with, uh, with Peter. Uh, it was small, smooth. Yeah, th- that was cool. Uh, favorite character in the show? Oh, fuck me. Silo is badass, man. I mean, yeah, you have to say. Silo. Silo, Silo was good. So, uh, I'll probably go with Silo's power and character. Yeah, see, that's, he's I had to show you this. Actually, I got at the auction. This is Hero Sword from the actual first. Oh, movie. really? Yeah. That's 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 the one. That's from Massey. I mean, from uh, yeah. This is the Massey. And then uh, the comic right here. This is Massey's from the very end of episode one. It's uh, him in New York City. Oh, cool. Yeah. Oh, so, my and I have one nice. of your necklaces. They made uh, nine different ones, I believe, over the course of it. And I'm rocking one yeah. of the original ones. Oh, great! I mean, shame on me. I don't even have one. Oh my God. <laughs> anytime anything heroes comes up on there but uh yeah any websites where fans can follow you uh, are you on twitter facebook anything like that these days you have to be on twitter and facebook and all these things so yeah just go on jimmy jean louis all across and you'll find me twitter facebook instagram and and everything else jimmy jean louis or haitian hero i think sometimes Oh, Nero, and I'll make sure I put this out to all the Facebook fans. Now, Jimmy, before we get a chat, I just have to tell you, man, I know that the show is off the air, but the show Heroes meant more to me than I could ever describe. At a very bad point in my life, right after my father had passed away, literally two weeks oh, really? after that, that show had aired, and it got me through a really, really tough time, and it is my favorite show of all time. Your character was incredible, and I thank you for everything that you guys did. I look forward to seeing what's coming from you, but just coming on this show is a, like a bucket list item for me so thank you very very much it means the world oh man thank thank you very much for saying all those uh real and deep words because uh you know lord knows that sometimes all you need is something to pick you up and and i'm glad that maybe he will might have helped you in uh in those difficult moments so thank you very much and hopefully we'll be able to to bring more powerful tv shows or movies you know coming up not a problem. And Jimmy, just stay with us for like 10 seconds after we guys it. So this is our outro. So that's going to wrap things up for this very special interview. Make sure you check out all the links below uh, for Jimmy. Thank you so much. This will be the Get Your Geek On podcast. I'm Chuck Watts. Robert Dokes. You guys have yourselves a week. Yo, yo! Uh, Jimmy, thank you so much, man. I cannot tell you. It's right, hard man. for me to not tear up at the end, man. Thank you. Okay. Take care. Um, so I'll, sh- yeah, I'll yeah. shoot you uh, an edited version of the video when it's done to your email. Okay, cool. Thank you. Have nice a good one. one. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.